Hello, MJ7NLK here, and welcome back to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, then I would like to thank you for your continued support, and if you're not, then please click the subscribe button. It really does help the channel out. Today we are looking at the President Taylor 4 CB radio. We will be taking a tour of the box, doing an unboxing, undertaking power tests, modifying the radio, and accessing the hidden services menu, so do stick around. You can also visit our website, nlkmediagroup.com, where you can download our service document for this radio, which contains the key configuration information. All President radios are named after US Presidents, and this one is named after President Zachary Taylor, the 12th US President. Taylor was born in Virginia in 1784 and was brought up on a plantation and became a career officer in the army. His home was in Louisiana and he owned a plantation of his own in Mississippi. His nickname was Old Rough and Ready due to the fact that he was happy to lead from the front and get his boots dirty alongside his men. Not the best track record with regards to Indians, Mexicans and slavery, so let's skim over all that. Taylor became president in March of 1849 and fell ill on the 4th of July 1850 and died five days later. A short tenure, but not the shortest. President Harrison gets that award. So here we have the President Taylor 4 CB radio. We're going to take a quick look round the box first we can see that it has 12 and 24 volt support, has automatic squelch control third generation, seven color display, automatic SWR meter, and Vox built in. This QR code here will take you to the page on the President website, and it has a two plus three year warranty. One word of caution is that if you do open the radio up and modify it, that will most likely invalidate your warranty, so please bear that in mind. Looking at the front of the radio, it's nice to see that we have a rotary dial, which is much preferred over up-down buttons. We have a total of three dials, two buttons and three sliders, so this should be a relatively easy radio to use. And it's nice to see on the LCD display that we have the channel frequency displayed, although it is only two three decimal places in the picture. And of course, at the bottom, we have engineered to be the very best. Looking around the edges of the box, we can see that it supports all European norms. So that's nice. We'll support the uh, UK 40. Looking around the edges, there's not a great deal to report here. And then looking at the back, we have the usual stencil that's on the back of every President radio box. And we can see that it has the DNC 520 up-down button microphone. It has an SO239 connector for the antenna, a Vox PA and external speaker jacks, and we have a fixed power cable. I much prefer the three pin plug connector at the back of the radio it just makes life a lot easier when you're swapping radios in and out a lot but if this is going to be fixed into a vehicle and remain there then there's no problem with that so that's the quick look around the box um, let's crack on and open it up so here we go just to let you know that I have already opened this just to remove the noisy wrapping around the radio and the microphone. But apart from that, this is my first look. We get the number one CB president sticker that you get with all president radios that I've seen recently. You also get the printed user manual, which is, uh, which is nice. We have the radio itself. And we'll come back to this in a moment, but it's a, it's a reasonable size, reasonable size. And then we have the accessories pouch. So in the accessory box, 
We do indeed have the DNC 520 up down button microphone. We have the bracket for affixing the radio to uh, under a shelf or in your motor vehicle. And we have the accessory pouch, which has the um, microphone clip, a spare fuse and screws and nuts for holding the radio to the bracket and the brackets to whatever you're fixing it to. So that's it for the unboxing of the contents. And looking at the front of the radio, uh, you can see the rotary dial, very nice. The automatic squelch control, in fact I haven't seen this on other President radios, but the, the on-off switch here, the clicky switch, and then the volume control, they've used the same switch on the automatic squelch control. Normally, when you turn the dial down to minimum, uh, then automatic squelch control is enabled, and then as you turn the dial up, it, uh, it disables that and, and goes into manual squelch. Uh, but in this instance, they've actually used a clicky button, the same as the power button, so that's quite nice. When it's off, automatic squelch control is enabled, and then it's disabled, and you have your normal squelch control. So that's very nice. We have the USB socket on the front with a green protector in, um, and apart from that, it's exactly the same as the stencil on the back of the box. So let's get this hooked up and let's perform some standard power tests and see what she's putting out out of the box. So let's talk through the setup that we're using here for the power tests. We have the Taylor 4, which is connected to my sampler, which is a tap attenuator. That takes a small feed off here for my spectrum analyzer, which is not plugged in at the moment, uh, and passes the signal straight through to my uh, Nissi RS70, which is a um, power and SWR meter. Great little unit, this one, although it does like to eat batteries, which is why it's uh, plugged into the mains at the moment. And then that goes out to a dummy load, so there is no transmission. Uh, a viewer asked me to test on AM, not just the carrier signal, uh, but also a signal with a tone. So I have a tone generator here to, to generate a tone to do that test. Although I do believe that the AM testing is done based on the carrier and not the carrier with a tone. But we'll do it nonetheless. So let's press on now with the standard power test. So here we go on channel 20, uh, FM UK is the uh, selected frequencies, and let's see what FM output we have. So 3.41 watts for FM, and for AM on the carrier, 3.7 watts. And then if we pump in a tone, about 8.82 .8 watts on AM. So next up, we're going to look at the factory services menu, which is a hidden menu the factory use to configure the radio prior to sending them out. In order to get into this menu, you need to perform some ninja moves, but before that, you have to ensure that the dials are in a specific location. The first one is to ensure that the first slider is in the off position, the second slider is in the off position, and the third slider is all the way up in the CB position. When they are in that sequence, you then push and hold the PTT button on the side of the microphone. You need to push the mode and F key at the same time, and with all three depressed, turn the radio on and release. And then you'll see PL and some numbers um, on the screen, and you're in the factory services menu. So there are various options in here in the standard radio configuration mode, and you normally get additional options when the radio has been modified. 
So to navigate through these menu items, you use the up and down buttons of the microphone to cycle through the relevant settings. And if you push and hold the PTT button and use the rotary dial, you can then change the values that are displayed on the screen. So the first option is PL, which is the power low mode. Uh, and you should have a high power mode. Sometimes it's P2 or could be PH when the radio is modified. Uh, but in this mode, we have power low. My default setting is 131. And if you hold the PTT button down, you'll see that it's outputting 3.7 watts. And if you turn the rotary dial, it will then decrease the number and you'll see the power output is dropping to 3.2. So we'll turn it up and see what headroom we have. So 131 was the standard setting and we can go up 139, 144, um, all the way up to 150. So 150 is the maximum setting and you'll see the radio is outputting 6.71 watts um, when at its highest standard setting. Releasing the PTT button will then stop the transmission. We can cycle to the next mode, which is FM. Uh, this is the FM deviation mode. My standard value is 511. And it says in the manual that 1.25K 30MV adjusts to 1.8 kilohertz. Recommendation here is leave this setting alone unless you have specialized equipment in order to be able to set this value. Moving on to the next option, that is AL, and AL is the AM Low Power Amplitude Adjustment. So this is not AM Power, that is also controlled by PL. This is Amplitude Adjustment, and the recommendation here is leave well alone. My default value is 78, uh, and the manual says 1.25K at 30MV, adjust to between 87 and 88%. The next option is RI, and this is the S meter adjustment. My default value is 55, and it should be between 1 and 1.2K. Uh, turn the channel rotary dial to adjust the needle to 9. Uh, default value 55. Next option is uh, V, which is the software version of the radio, and mine is 1.165. You can't change anything here, it's just telling you what the software version is. And then cycling again takes you back to the PL mode. So those are the adjustments that you have as standard in the factory services menu. If we turn the radio off and then turn the radio back on, once the radio has come back up, We'll switch to FM UK, channel 20, 6.32 watts is what we're currently outputting after making the power adjustment. If we switch to AM, 6.8 watts, and if we uh, pump in a tone, about 11.6 watts, um, outside of the carrier. Okay, so that's the factory services menu. So now let's move on and uh, look at how to perform the modification on this radio. So next up, we're gonna perform the modification on the radio. And in order to do this, you need to remove the outer casing, but you only need to remove one side. So on the Taylor 4, if you turn the radio over so that its uh, bottom is facing up, um, where the speaker is, the speaker protrudes into the uh, inside of the case and therefore the circuit board must run along the bottom side. So it's the bottom case that you need to remove. There are two screws here, one at the back and then two screws on this side that need to be removed. So let's do that now. <laughs> So once the screws have been removed, you can just tease the case up and then pop it off 
to one side, whichever side it will sit flat. There is, there is a um, connector inside here where you can remove the speaker cable. Uh, they are not soldered, which is very helpful. Now turning the radio around, we can see the adjustment or the modification pieces, which I'm going to take, I might be able to show you this on the camera. So if you look, there's a white loop wire here, and next to it there is a jumper, which is here, and that has one, two, and three on it. I don't know if you can see that. So the modification, I'll take some pictures and put them on screen so you can see a close up, uh, but the modification is to cut the wire and to move the jumper from position one, two to position two, three. So we're gonna go ahead and do that next. So we simply just need to snip the wire and then using some tweezers, we need to move the jumper, as said before, it's a bit difficult for me to show on the camera, but let me just jump it over and just move those and I'll show you the, show you the result of performing the modification. So the wire is, you can see it there, is snipped and the jumper has been moved. Again, I'll show you that on the camera. And then it is simply um, reassemble and we'll then come back and turn the radio on and show you the differences that makes. So now that we have expanded the radio, let's talk about what that actually does. It adds the 120 channel mode. Uh, well, it's actually more than 120 channels because it fills in with the alphas, which I'll explain in a moment. And it also gives you a higher power mode within the factory services menu, which has a bit more headroom than the power low mode. When you first turn the radio on, you'll see TS is displayed on the screen, and that is the standard mode. If you push and hold the F key, it will switch to a minus five kilohertz decrement in all of the band blocks. So it will show a full stop between the two and the zero for channel 20, so that is channel 20, not 2.0, just so that you know you're in the five kilohertz decrement mode. So 27200, if we put it back to standard, then 27205. TS is where we want to be. So if you then move through the channels, so as we go up, we get to channel 40 in band block A, the A is above the 405 there. As we move to the next block, it will switch to band block B and you have another 40 channels and then C, 40 channels. So you have a normal set of 40, you have an inferior 40 and a superior 40. I'll put a, a table up on the screen with the relevant frequencies for you now. If we return back to channel 20 on a band block, you'll see that we have 27205 and then channel 19 is 27185. So there is a gap in this increment um, as it goes up through the channels, and that's where the 19A falls in, which fills in that increment, to 27195, which is not normally available, and the A is displayed in the leg of the 9. This also happens at channel 15, 15 alpha, 15, uh, channel 11, I believe, 11, 11 alpha, and at 7, 7 alpha and 3, I think it is. So let's return to channel 20. So that's your additional frequencies in your three band blocks. So now let's have a look at going into the services menu and find the higher power mode. So to access the services menu again, we need to perform the ninja moves. So we'll do that now to get into the factory services menu. And you'll see that the new menu of PM is displayed on the screen. P 
PM138 is the default value. And this is the, I assume, medium power mode um, or the high power mode that the radio has. The heatsink is pretty small on the back, so I don't think it's capable of a high, high power mode like the Walker II or the, uh, the President Richard would be. So if we cycle these options, we have power low as we had before. We have the FM deviation. We have the various settings. And on the version number, we have a big E that's displayed so that you know the radio is in expanded mode. So... PM is the only additional option that we have on this radio when expanded. So we can turn this up and see what sort of headroom we have in this. Now remember the power low mode had a 150 maximum value. Let's see where this can go, which will probably be 170. So we key up and then we can increase to the same as the power low mode. 160. 170 is the highest value we can achieve here and it's 9.36 watts at the moment. So that's your um, higher power mode. Let's turn the radio off, turn the radio back on. At channel 20 in FM, let's get our power readings here. 9.43 watts in FM and in AM 9.43 watts and let's put in a tone about 15.2 watts with the tone so that's your modified maximum power settings on this radio. So that's it for the rundown of this radio and the modifications but before we conclude let's just return this radio back to a legal setting. So power low let's return that to just slightly over 4 watts. 134 is the setting. Maybe we go 133, that's fine. So 133, 3.96 watts. And then power medium. Three point nine six watts. So that now will output just in case somebody else picks this radio up and starts to use it, uh, it will not be outputting more than the legal requirement in my jurisdiction, which is 4 watts. If you made it this far into the video, then thank you for sticking around. If you could take a few seconds of your time and click the thumbs up button, that would really help me out. So, in conclusion, would I recommend that you buy this radio? The answer to that is simple, no. Buy the Walker 2. It's only £10 more and it's more feature rich. The Walker 2 has RF power, RF gain and mic gain adjustment dials which are missing on the Taylor 4. It's difficult to understand the price and feature set here compared to the Walker 2 and who this radio is targeted at. I have seen the Taylor 4 being discounted online and selling for around £135 which then starts to make a bit more sense. However, if you want a well-built, uncomplicated radio with some nice features taken from the more premium units, then the Taylor 4 could be for you. In the event of an emergency, when expanded, the maximum power output is just shy of 10 watts and the audio output is clear and loud. Just buy the Walker 2, it's a far more capable radio. I hope you found the information in this video helpful. If you did, then please help the channel out by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. This really does help and ensures that I can continue to provide content. Please feel free to buy me a coffee, details are in the description below, and if you have any questions or comments, then you know what to do. All I ask is that you keep it respectful. Nasty know-it-alls need not apply. Until next time, stay safe, 
stay happy, and catch you in the next one. Thank you.